how are the Jewish feasts tied to 2025, 2029, and the arrival of uh, Apophis? Apophis. Apophis. Yeah, uh, and by the way, that's where I was trying to head a moment ago when my old gray-haired brain um, forgot what I was talking about. The old preacher in me, I I preached down a pig trail and forgot what I was even going to uh, say. But the new studio and the new programs that we're filming over there, our very first shows are dealing with this question, how the Jewish feasts are connected uh, to the arrival of Apophis. Well, I happened to be doing programs uh, last year in the old studio with Derek Gilbert. And while we were talking about uh, Apophis and, uh, and, and the Wormwood prophecy, uh, I made the case that if Apophis is the fulfillment of the Wormwood prophecy, Revelation chapter 8, that would happen in the middle of the Great Tribulation period. And then I made this point. I said, so if you are, and most evangelical uh, Christians, whether they know it or not, are dispensationalists who believe in a seven-year tribulation period, um, if that's what you believe, and if Apophis is Wormwood, then with that being in the middle of the tribulation period, you would count backward 3.5 years to arrive at the beginning of what is called the seven-year Great Tribulation uh, period. Well, while I was saying that, Derek and Sharon, who were interviewing me, Derek is sitting across, and he's got his iPad or whatever it is he's using, his MacBook, uh, and he had opened a a Jewish calendar, a Hebrew calendar, uh, on his device. And he went 3.5 years earlier, and he literally turned pale. Because 3.5 years earlier, before the impact of Apophis, to the day is the middle of the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, I don't, I, we probably don't have enough time for me to explain all the ways in which uh, end times prophecy experts connect the Feast of Tabernacles and the Feast of Trumpets with uh, the beginning of the seven-year tribulation period and the second coming of Jesus Christ. But just suffice to say this. It not only falls into the middle of the Feast of Tabernacles, but literally on the seventh day of the Feast of Tabernacles in 2025. So uh, just five years from now. Um, Why is that important? Because the seventh day of the Feast of Tabernacles is when the ancient Hebrews, get this, sacrificed seven bulls in commemoration of God delivering them from all of the gods of the nations, but in particular, delivering them from the gods of Egypt, and in particular, delivering them from Apophis, the ancient Egyptian god of chaos. Literally, that day in antiquity is 3.5 years to the day from when Apophis is going to strike the earth is when the Hebrews will be celebrating how God in antiquity delivered them from Apophis. So is God going to deliver his own people Uh, 3.5 years earlier? Ten days before that is the Feast of Trumpets, which is also connected to the second coming of Christ. Why? Because the Apostle Paul uh, drew a, a parallel to the Feast of Trumpets when he said, at the last trump, so the, the, uh, during the Feast of Trumpets, the shofar is sounded 100 times. Paul says, at the last trump, the dead in Christ shall rise. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together uh, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord uh, in the air. But get this, in 2025, 120 days before that is the Feast of Pentecost. And in biblical numerology, the number 120 is the number of the end of mankind. God said in Genesis My spirit will not always strive with man, for his years will be 120. And that set the pattern for that to be the representation of the end of mankind. Of course, Moses was also a parody uh, 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 of that in that he died at 120 years of age. So all of these highly important Jewish feasts that are connected to the second coming of Christ are absolutely connected 3.5 years earlier to, uh, from the impact of Apophis, which I believe is the fulfillment of the Wormwood prophecy of Revelation chapter 8. One more final thing, because we totally are not going to have time to talk about this. The ancient Essenes, <coughs> the inhabitants of Qumran, 
You know, lots of people, they know the Essenes from uh, the, uh, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls that were discovered there uh, in the, like the 1940s. What they don't know and by the way, this has only been unearthed in the last 50 years. Archaeologists have also recovered prophecies that the Essenes made, and even material that illustrates who the Essenes were. 150 years before the birth of Jesus Christ, the Essenes began prophesying about the first advent of the coming of the Messiah. They said that he would come at a time when a king named Herod would be a king, and he would turn evil. They said he would, he would die in the year 32 AD, which is what scholars believe exactly happened. They said he will die not only for Jewish people, but he will be sacrificed for the Gentiles as well and give birth to an age of grace that would extend for a period of uh, 2,000 years. The list literally goes on and on. We're going to produce a documentary film in 2021 about all of this. But why am I bringing this all up now? Because they also prophesied this, that mankind, now this was over 2,000 years ago, these highly accurate uh, prophets called the Essenes who lived in Qumran, uh, they predicted that mankind will enter its final age. Guess when? In the year 2025. So that list goes on and on. People need to get these books from you because I predict that we are in a countdown now. Uh, and in fact, we're going to produce a book about that too that we'll have out in 2021 sometime. Uh, and I won't give you the title to it because somebody else would steal the title then and throw out a cheap version of the book just by listening to what I'm talking about. So right now it's top secret information, but there are a massive amount of indicators that 2025 is a pivotal year that the world needs to be paying attention to.